Hi, my name's Keith Cooper and in this video I'm testing the Epson P5000 printer. It's a big printer, um, 17 inch, but it's physically a big printer, as you'll see in a minute. Uh, I'm going to make a black and white fine art print. Now, fine art means whatever you want it to mean. It's a marketing term. Uh, the version of the paper I'm going to use here is Epson's Fine Art Cotton Smooth Natural. That means it's a smooth finish. Natural means there are no optical brightness in it. Now, the image I'm going to pick is one that if you see my videos before, you've seen I've used a few times in testing printers. And it's a view of the Sea of Steps at uh, Wells Cathedral. Sea of Steps was uh, the name of F.H. Evans' original photo he took of this uh, scene in about 1908, if I remember rightly. Um, classic black and white architectural photograph. Um, this is a version I took a few years ago uh, using a 17mm shift lens to see um, partly how views had changed by between the equipment from 100 years ago and uh, what we would likely use now. Certainly the stuff I use for my own architectural photography. Um, that is also a shot at Wells Cathedral, that's in the main bit, but I'm just going to print this one here. Now I've opened up the image, I've produced it and I've resized it and I've done everything I want. I'm going to make an A2 size print. That's quite a big print. That is a box of A2 paper, so it's pretty hefty. Um, that's one of the things you use this printer for. It does print smaller as well. It prints roll as well, but I'm just going to do a single print on a sheet. Now, here's the image in Photoshop. Now, I've got a couple of ways I could print this. Um, I could print directly from Photoshop. So if I go to the print dialog here for this, it's a big file, so it takes a moment or two, and there it is. Um, I can print this with a profile, or as I would normally use for a printer like this, I can print it using the Epson black and white print mode. Now I've got lots in the original uh, review. Uh, the original review for this printer is a written review. I'm in the process of doing a video review to augment that, but the videos uh, are more recent. I've only started doing them relatively recently compared to how long I've been doing printer reviews. So I've got quite a lot of printer reviews which don't have videos to go with them. Doesn't mean they're any less detailed or anything, just means you have to read something. But anyway, here's this. Um, I'm going to use the uh, printer manager's colour setting here. That's because I'm going to use the black and white print mode. I could use a profile, but I found for this printer that the Epson print and black and white print mode works really well. So I'll go to that. I'll just check, double check the print settings. And I've got here, um, I've set it, I've created a preset for this. If you do much printing and things, create presets with the settings. It makes things much more consistent, much easier to print. It also lowers the risk of you getting a setting wrong and wasting an A2 size sheet of paper. And the paper that size is not cheap. So you want to know what you're doing first. Test on smaller prints if need be. Um, remember, you know, just chucking A2 sheets of paper into a printer and hoping they're going to come out. Well, that's fine if you can afford it, but uh, not that many people can these days. Um, I've got it set for A2 with borders. Uh, in terms of the print uh, settings, it's set for advanced black and white photo. Now that's how I could I could print that and it would print. I'm actually going to use the Epson print layout software uh, since it's very easy to use. Um, it's free software. You can use it with other software. You can print directly from here from quite a few bits of software. But yeah, the Epson print software, I always include it in reviews, partly because it's quite good, but also because when it's free, uh, but also because it's the same on Windows and Macs. Um, I only use Macs for testing here, so I'm quite aware that quite a lot of people will be using different systems to this. But anyway, that's how I print from Photoshop. And this is an oldish version of Photoshop. This is CS6 on this laptop. Um, I've got the current version of Photoshop on machines I use for editing, but this is perfectly good for printing. So I could use Affinity Photo or anything for that here. But anyway, we'll just cancel that one. And I cancel that one there. Now I'm going to just call up under the automate menu Epson print layout. Now 
as I say. This is um, sort of separate software, but it's loaded up from Photoshop in this instance. You can use it standalone as well if you want to print JPEGs and things like that. Uh, it'll take a while because it has to transfer the image at full resolution, and it's a big image to print at this size. It's got to print, send it to the software. There we go, it's loaded into it. Now, the settings here, I've set the media type for fine art, cotton, smooth, natural, i.e. this actual paper. There is a problem, however, in that the paper settings on the P5000 itself, it doesn't have the huge great range of paper media types that are available here. What you can do, you can either print using something like the ultra smooth fine art paper, USFA, standard setting, or VFA velvet fine art. These are two standard settings for Epson printers over the years. Or you can specify this, and when you load the paper into the printer, you don't specify a paper type. Um, so you don't get a mismatch then. So it allows me to specify a paper type here that the printer doesn't have. Now, the printer's a few years old. If you were to look at something more recent, uh, such as the Epson P7500 I reviewed recently, much bigger printer than this, 24-inch rather than 17-inch width, if you were to have a look at that, then you'll see it has a much bigger range of papers. It has custom media, lots more features which aren't necessarily available with this one. Now, that doesn't matter because you can do all the same things on the P5000. It just means you have to be a little bit more careful in how you set things up. So I've got this with the paper. I've got the paper size set. I've set the for the margins here. I want to print with a nice, look, nice margin on the print. Um, I've set it layout to image size. I've told it to lock the aspect ratio because otherwise it sort of crops to try and fit things. And I've set a size here. I've got the black and white print settings, the ABW mode in its default settings. So all I really need to do there is just set that up and press the print to do it. And go over to the printer and actually do the print. Now the printer is, should be receiving data from the computer. It'll take a while, but I'm gonna load a sheet of paper up first. Now I'm using the top loading slot here. That pulls up, that sets there. In order to load a sheet of paper, I'm gonna make sure the printer's actually awake. And I'm just going to push it in. And I can feel resistance where it touches against the rollers inside it. I'll just put a little photograph of that inset that here so you can see it. Now that's set. There we go. It's told me to press the paper advance button. Now it's loaded the paper. You do have to make sure it hits that front roller first. I've not used this paper for this one for, for, for a while, which is why it took me a couple of goes to make sure it was set properly. Now, it's loaded the paper in, it's gonna check that it's loaded straight. The head will go backwards and forwards a few times. You can see the paper moving. Um, I'm hoping that the print will come out. With most of these videos, I actually try and film them on the very first take, the first attempt at doing it. That is because if you see me slightly confused by something, take it as a hint that there are aspects of this that you need to get right and it's possible to forget the details if you've not used the printer for a few weeks. And I haven't, although I've done a few test prints on this to keep it busy and keep it used, I haven't actually printed anything of any size on this printer since it was moved here into the office. Um, looking at the print, it's coming, I'm printing at um, the quality setting. There are only two settings for the drive on this. There's quality and high quality. Um, I will be doing some testing to see what difference the quality settings make, but past experience tells me that for prints on this type of paper, I can use the quality setting, ABW black and white print mode, and I can see that the print is coming out well and it is looking good. Now, I've got at the front here, I can extend the arm here just to catch 
the print there. Um, if there was one bit of the design of this printer that I do find, it's, it's very solid, but there's one bit I do find just a tad flimsy. It is this plastic drawer that comes, or tray that comes out to catch prints. It needs to go back very up. Think of um, a, a drawer um, in a chest of drawers where the drawer doesn't fit quite right and if you don't get it square it jams. Very similar with this bit of plastic. Um, I don't know what it is, I'm going to put it just down to the design of it. Um, it is nothing but a mild irritation and I have to remember it when I pull it because otherwise it jerks and they don't really want that while the printer is printing. Um, the printer itself, well, it just does, it prints print is looking good but so it should I've used this printer several times the whole point of this video really is to go um, the key is the preparation of the original image once you've got the image prepared then just printing it is a matter of loading up the paper correctly and letting it print um, I know what this is going to look like I don't expect any surprises at this point uh, this particular paper, I say it's optical brightener free, so it's a, a, a slightly warmer paper, but I prefer that for the stonework of the cathedral steps there. Now, you might prefer a luster finish, you might something more contrasty. If you do, I've got a video that actually looks at, and I believe it's this image here, uh, another one of Wells Cathedral, where I print it on different types of paper to show how different paper choices make things. But this video really is just about how easy it is to produce a black and white fine art print. So once again, you know, in, interpret the term fine art as you will. Uh, I regard it entirely as a marketing feature. The main noise that comes from this printer is because it's got fans in it to circulate air around the print area to keep dust down and also for cooling and drying purposes. Um, it's a noisy printer. You wouldn't want this in an office sitting next to you. But think of this as a large format printer that's just a bit shorter. This is virtually identical in terms of print quality and characteristics to the larger Epson P7000 I looked at a few years ago, which is slightly smaller than the P7500 I looked at just a few weeks ago. This is 17 inch, this is a heavy duty printer. Um, if you gave me a choice between printing on this or the Epson P900, which is a 17 inch printer as well, but much smaller, much lighter, I would pick this every day. Not because I don't like the P900, because it's a great printer. It's just, I like the solidity of this one. The roll feed on the back of it, it just works really well. Uh, you put paper in, it comes out, it prints. Job done. Um, you do not have to worry much about printing once you've got it set up. I've created loads of profiles for this in the process when I did the testing and I've made other profiles since. And there is nothing unexpected about this as it prints. There's nothing that I have to think, oh yeah, I'm printing on the P5000, I need to remember to do such and such. Now, I have looked at in the original uh, written review, I got some details about linearity for black and white printing. So it is possible for some images and some papers, you, even though you use the ABW black and white print mode, you might want to add a very slight adjustment curve in something like Photoshop before you print to get the shadow detail at the right level. But that's being picky. Um, that's for when I'm printing you know, big pictures uh, and doing stuff like this. Uh, yeah, this, I, I like A2 as a size. Um, I wish I had a much, much bigger house, um, don't we all? But um, where I could put more of these on the wall. But uh, this is slight, this one at the back here, this is on a, an art paper. Uh, this was printed years ago on an Epson P9600 pigment ink based printer, 44 inch big printer, much bigger than this even, really big printer. But that was printed and because it's on roll, it's slightly larger than A2. If you printed A2, it would just be a little bit too small for the mat. If you had a border on it here, you'd end up cropping slightly. But 
it's not the printer, it's not the paper, it's the picture that counts. So um, don't get too hung up on making sure every single, you get the absolute best printer. Because first of all, there's no such thing really as the best printer. But more to the point, bad prints come from bad photography. If your photography isn't up to printing this size, doesn't matter how good the profiles are, how many different papers you try, tough. You're not going to get the good results. Now, I could tell if I get, I've got lots of bad prints as well. That's one of the reasons I do test prints and things. You know, um, I tend to show my better pictures. Well, that's partly because I'm a professional photographer and a professional photographer showing rubbish pictures, unless it's for educational purposes, it's not necessarily the best of ideas. Anyway, there it goes. This has a vacuum system, by the way, to hold the paper in place. So there are no marks or anything on this. And there we have the steps at Wells Cathedral. Now, it's taken no real effort at all to print this because I've got the image. I've worked on the image. Once I've got the image right, I can just print this off. And there we go. We've got that. That's on a, as I say, a matte paper. Um, it's a natural one. I've got mixed LED lighting in here, so it should look fairly neutral, but I can't guarantee it. Certainly not shooting on video. So there you have it. Uh, that's all it takes to make an A4, A2 black and white fine art print. Um, if you've got any questions, please do ask. I'm going to be doing lots more videos, short ones like this, looking at features of the P5000 using it, and also the image editing and other stuff. So if you've got questions, please ask, because they're often what give me ideas for doing the videos. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, or please do subscribe to the channel if you find it interesting. It is appreciated. And um, thanks for watching.